like weirdly placed today. I don't know what is going on. Should it's I fall apart? Should I? Yeah, the entire the entire podcast it's is fall. over. I it's think apart. janky is one word I would describe. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I'm happy with this. I guess you know. Fuck it. Fuck me. It's fine. It's just uh, you know. <laughs> Dude, you're so unhappy is. with it. We can just move it. Why does your shoes say think, say think happy thoughts on it? And these are the shack. Why does your necklace Reebok say fish? Pump? Oh, it's my it's my dog that passed away. Oh fuck, my yeah. bad. Uh, He's really into jam bands too. <laughs> I was trying to say I was trying to deter the conversation. Over yeah, he just got that. back from Red Rocks. He's been yeah. torn with I'm fish. Big fish head with mm. the pH. Isn't that isn't that how you say it? Fish with the pH. Yeah, it's just fish. Yeah. It's just fish. <laughs> I no, fucking hate pish. that man. I'm not a. I'm oh, not, you're a pish man. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not a jam band uh, guy at all. If you, I bet <laughs> if I to popular, if I put opinion, you on the right drugs, I bet I could get you into a solid jam band sesh. I've been to. Uh, I've been to a Grateful Dead concert one time. Huh? That none of them are alive anymore, are there? Like, Was there a cover band? One? No, no, Bob Weir, and and they still tour. I did not know they, that. They still tour. They tour with, uh, they tour John Mayer. They were doing it for a while. Oh. Yeah, that's, I mean, no, no, I'll no. take you to some real jam band shit. Stream Damn, bro, the deadheads are fucking Mo. coming after you after no, that they one. Won't. They we won't. have a big, big audience of deadheads. They won't come after me because they know after Garcia died, so went the band too. Okay. I agree. Uh, that's this my is, contribution. Yeah, this is the, the jankiest. But welcome to the jankiest podcast. God, that's a good name. The jankiest yeah. fuck. Yeah, the janky. You guys Where fucked we, up. Fear and what? The, the hanky panky. Um, all right. This is our, our producer, March, on the ones and twos over here. Fucking. Give me five minutes to set up. Mm, 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 mm. It's in frame, the other camera. Okay, I think this is good. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. <laughs> Crossing. He's the fastest producer in the world. Damn. You got that set up in three seconds flat. Yeah, we've done this so many times. So yeah. he's just, he's quick with it. He's nice with it. Mm. All right. Uh, like I said, welcome to the Janky Podcast. Uh, this is Anthony Padilla in the building. Hello. That's right. We are spending a day with Anthony Padilla. Let's be honest. It's or, only going to be an hour and 20 am minutes. I, am I hour. allowed to say, well, okay, technically that's what you do <laughs> as well. Hey, shut the fuck up, okay? We don't talk about that. I know. He's going to strike us, this shit, dude. I'm going to take you down. Dude, that jacket is so sick. I just oh, want to get you. started on that. What thank is you. what's going on there? Uh, I have no idea. It looks it's like someone distressed. straight up took sandpaper to it, and I'm yeah. so into it. It looks dope. It looks like a costume. Yeah, I kind of like that, right? You look like you just came right out of like slaying Ludwig in Bloodborne. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I kind of feel a little colonial. Yeah. yeah. But like not the fucked up kind. Yeah, yeah. I like the imperial the like cool the good, kind. The like ca- the cool kind. The, the cool colonial kind. Where yeah. It was like, as a matter of fact, sir, we should not do this. <laughs> that's what you were saying. Yeah. We should slavery. not do this podcast. Yeah. Is that... No, no, no. More like slavery. Very bad. Oh, yeah. Wrong. About that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I might stuff. be in the minority, <laughs> yeah. but slavery is bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That kind. I would I would peg you yeah. as that. You would just, I don't know that clip. You just, you just said you would peg me and it just took, took really took me out. For a yeah. Second. I'm sorry. Well, this is, there's going to be sexual innuendos okay. uh, throughout. So that was in. intended. That was intentional. Okay. So we're trying so to get okay. some TikTok clips. Let's blast here. through our bumbling here for a second. I kind of wasted all the good conversation before the podcast. Well, oh, we did. We already cool. talked about it all. Just well, do it again. And I will not say it, yeah. <laughs> any of that stuff again. So I'm going to ask again. you a question. Oh, God. To Lita. Okay. What is the first video of his you ever saw? Oh, that's actually a good question. Uh, it was like I spent a day... From his I spent a day. That's series. crazy, you I Turkish watched, fuck. I never watched. Uh, you did Smosh, right? Yeah. yeah. Never <laughs> watched. Never watched that. Did not know anything about it. Was like, like that part of YouTube. You I did just Smosh. Right? Yeah. Like not even remotely interested in any of that. I Tell watched Hassan, it. you're the day in the life guy. Yeah. No, I mean to a lot of people that's the yeah. case. So. <laughs> Let me let me open a conversation. <laughs> Go ahead. You're red, right? You're bright red with it, with elation. That's like that's like someone to Peyton Manning being like, I remember you from football commentary. You played once before then, right? Like, Tosh, it kind of, well, don't okay. Now you're making it seem like his career is over doing day. No, in the no, 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 no. That's not okay. Let me let me let me shift the focus of the conversation. A 15 year old will at one point watched a video that is kind of 
Um, <laughs> I would say legendary on the internet in, in the in the hollows of Pull like Charlie bit me type internet fame. Okay, I know Charlie bit me, but you're not. But he's not the Charlie. I'm bit not me. the Charlie he, bit me he, guy. No. He was in the car. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Um. So he. Uh, and his partner made a video where they lip sync along to the Pokemon theme. Yeah. And I was telling him, you have to watch this. A 15 year old Will Neff, this was a life changing. It got experience. taken down for copyright for infringement. Copyright. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So we uploaded that in November 2005. And yeah. I think it was uh, June, maybe a little bit earlier, 2007. <laughs> Brother, it was I was in Turkey back then. Yeah. I, I think I gave I, a yeah fuck what were you doing? <laughs> like, what? I was playing Dota. <laughs> no, but. Um, I was saying that that video is kind of pivotal in a lot of young creators' lives, a lot of YouTubers' lives. I mean, my I can only speak for myself, but I'm, I'm assuming. Because that video was the first time, I was probably 14 years old, I saw this video and I was like, holy shit. You can just make stuff and put it on YouTube and become famous. Yeah, what it. was it about? Because it was so crudely made. I think that was it. Was I it that it was that like it was like it was crude, but it was like two friends having a great time. Yeah, and it went ballistic. Yeah, we went crazy. It went ballistic. How many views? Uh, it had twenty five million before it was removed that's for insane. copyright infringement. And at that time, that's like actually yeah. it the was, entire it, world. You got to pull it up. It was the number one most viewed video on YouTube at, at yeah, the time. Hassan for a while. has no idea what we're yeah. talking about. He was in Turkey. <laughs> Praying five yeah, what were you doing still. in 2005, 2006? I was literally in like, I was in high there school. There it is. I was in high school Look, in Turkey. No, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I can't see, but. Uh, no, no, he's going to pull it up. Yeah, yeah. Show wow, you dude. You know what's crazy? Oh, yeah, wait, in this video, you look like Marsh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, okay, just like play it on mute. Let's see. Cause it, okay. I know, just play it and mute it after. Because this makes no sense no, 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 whatsoever. No, no, no. Play it on mute because oh, like, we, we don't want to get the video taken down. Yeah. He can just mute. Okay. No, he can't. Well, because we're doing commentary over it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first so of all. If you don't, if you don't know the Pokemon song, this is. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. At first, I was like, which one are you? Yeah. I was like, can you even tell which one I am? Uh, you're the one with the insane hair, which isn't yeah. really narrowing it down here. Yeah. Not. You're the one with. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? That yeah. was. A it mistake. was a look. A, a mistake? No, a mistake? No. Is that what you just said? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, Plus, wrong. if you say it about me, you're saying it about March wrong. right now. So. You got you to gotta take, <laughs> gotta take it in the context, man. In 2005, that shit went hard. In 2005, that went probably. hard. It went so hard. Yeah. Uh, lip syncing videos were really popular at the time, but we just threw in so many insane things. Good thing things. that changed a lot since 2005. Yeah. That is literally, yeah, you musically know, Well, TikTok. TikTok essentially is where YouTube was. Yeah. Or yeah. it feels like it. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a place where like everyone could have their fifteen minutes of fame. Uh, it was literally called broad. I mean, YouTube broadcast yourself was the tagline. Yeah, yeah, man, that this fucking platform. I it's mean, insane, we're we're the man. old dogs. Like, I mean, I was on the Young Turks, uh, and obviously, you are like one of the institutions of YouTube. Like originally, <laughs> yeah. you, I mean, for people who don't understand it, um, this is stuff I learned after the fact. But uh, you were basically Smosh was uh, like PewDiePie. Like it was a, a, to that level or what Mr. Beast is now. You were that before PewDiePie and before Mr. Beast. Yeah, we handed the crown to PewDiePie. We made a video when he became the number one most yeah. subscribed YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, we had this little video about I it. I do want to add a caveat though. Hmm. You were doing it with a lot of sketch. Yeah. Which was, I think is more difficult. I mean, I, I hate to, I hate to great difficulties but i think reality tv shows and kind of like competition shows on youtube are much more base and turning out a sketch that has that kind of appeal was always very impressive yes, it's difficult because, in another way yeah yeah it, of course it is because you can't always make everyone laugh like no. snl has awful seasons yeah we're living in it right now <laughs> and it's like and and uh in order to be able to like reach the broadest audience possible with sketch comedy is profoundly difficult yep. rather than being like a influencer that everyone uh you know likes the personality of or whatever yeah i just want to say i want to finish this thought before we move on that video inspired me to start making youtube crap and i uh. made a video in my high school about a, a, a fictional porn website called naughtyneff.com <laughs> 
and I would do weird things like hang upside down from my bunk bed and stuff like that. And then I would crop in videos that I would take of my teachers using the computer when they'd be like, who's on this site? And it would just cut to like a back view of like my physics teacher yeah. on the computer. And it went crazy among my high school friends. <laughs> but that was, that was the beginning for me. It was naughtyneff.com. That sounds really hot. My, uh, my interest in uh, making videos actually has a, a, a similar beginning to yours. I did my research. Really? Yeah. Anthony, well, you me. started off with uh, flash animation. Yes. I didn't yes. know this. In 2002, uh, I made Smosh.com. And then, I, I, and at that time, I was super into flash animation on Newgrounds. Did you me use too. Newgrounds? Yeah. Holy shit. Like stick figure Newgrounds. animations and shit like yeah. that. I, I was fascinated with animation. I did Macromedia Flash. Uh, mm. Like I literally. Uh, Do I, you I, have any of your flash animations? I don't believe so. I think one is on the internet somewhere. I don't even remember. I don't know how to like access it i don't know how to find it i would it. love but it was like a shittiest flashing. one uh, uh, like i i actually did a really good one when i was at parsons like i took a i took a summer semester at parsons specifically on macromedia flash like Shit. learning how to do two-dimensional design and uh you know that was what my first inception yours let's talk about you though you're yeah. the guest yeah i i love that so much uh and i was submitting my animations to Newgrounds, and they were getting blammed do you remember that term I, I never were, submitted. Okay, so they were getting voted down, and if they didn't oh. have like something over like a three point five rating or something like that, yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't be allowed to live so on they the were site. Mid. You were making mid. I was making real mid. Okay. Mid was that's even being a little generous. Some of, really? some of them are still online. I think you, you could find them. No way. They were so rough. Let's try uh, to find it. Uh, shit, I don't know what you have to type in to find it. Uh, I'm in the same. Go boat. to the Newgrounds portal. Uh, <laughs> so, you, so you drew. You, you like started off in the visual arts. Uh, kind with, of just because I wanted to make jokes and and you know stupid stuff in my mind come to life on the screen and it wasn't getting accepted to this website so my, i made my own rip off of the flash portal called the flash gateway which i just literally <laughs> typed in like synonyms for portal uh and i just made my own version of that and actually if you've ever heard of tom ska who made the asdf movie uh, he makes like these really he made these really popular flash animations for a while and he said he told me that he was getting rejected from newgrounds and he was accepted on smosh.com in the flash gateway and that's what encouraged him to uh continue creating stuff at that time so Hilarious. there was like a little legacy of uh that's the flash i did not know that part that, that is wild so that was really cool uh, but talk more about your transition from flash animation to making video yeah so i borrowed my dad's webcam i grew up with very very little money and even like getting my hands on the tech to create this stuff was just insane for me but my dad uh had some tech he had a webcam and i remember over at his house i was like are you using this thing i never see you use this thing can i borrow it i brought it over to my place never gave it back uh mm. but uh my friend ian and i were just hanging out and i had this new webcam and i was trying i was obsessed with learning every single thing about the internet and technology and things that i could do with it because uh, I grew up with an agoraphobic mother. I felt mm. very trapped in my house. If you don't know what that is, it's where you feel like your only safe space is, you know, in a very confined area. So for me yeah. or for my mom, it was within my house. And I had this lingering fear that I was going to be trapped in my house my whole life. And I felt like I didn't really have any resources. So, uh, you know, whenever I would see my computer in my room that my dad bought for me, I would see that I was like, that is that is infinite possibilities. That's my gateway. I, I, exactly. Bringing it back. And I was like, I can do anything with that. All I have to do, like the only limit is my knowledge about this stuff. So I was teaching myself about all these things. So I wanted to learn how to edit. And uh, I was playing, I was uh, illegally downloading some uh, the childhood theme songs that I grew You're up You're going with. to jail. I know. And I'm okay with that. That's okay. I wouldn't I've accepted download it. a car. <laughs> it was so funny because when those ads came out, I was like, yeah, yeah. but if I could duplicate it, yeah. no one would know. Dude, yeah, dude, I would duplicate a car. The, that's what I'm saying. When I saw that ad for the first time, I was like, of course I would download a car. What the fuck are you talking right, about? Right, it's not taking it, it's duplicating also, it. Also, that car, that song that they had kind in that of a ad, jam. Was a, uh, there was no reason it went that hard. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, it was so all good. grainy like yeah. the episode of a wire, you know what I mean? That aesthetic is like super back now too. Yeah. Oh, like mm. The Y2K aesthetic? Yeah. Like that shit's popping. It's vintage. We should make a trailer for our stream 
or our podcast like the you wouldn't du- yeah. duplicate a car. Yeah, that's why you should. That's why <laughs> you should. Yes, go to, I would. That's why you should go to patreoncom slash end Yeah, to unlock. I'm the gonna support e- some of the episodes. I'm gonna support that shit. Yeah. So um, I had just downloaded them and I was playing the uh, those songs and I started like lip syncing to it like over the top, just ridiculous. Because at the time there were some viral videos of people lip syncing to things, yeah. but they were like lip syncing to Backstreet Boys in like a very serious way where they were kind of like doing, it looked like they were doing karaoke. And I was like, what if we just kind of Turn use that to 11? <laughs> yeah. Like a, that flash animation over the top kind of comic book brought to lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and Ian and I did that and I edited, stayed up all night editing it. And we just laughed together making all those cuts. And it's, it's so funny. Even looking back at the editing software was so crude at the time. It was yeah. like, there'd be black spaces between every cut. Cause nothing would snap together. And it was like, that's good. Put it up there. Who gives a fuck? Would you make it with like movie maker? Uh, or? Pinnacle. I think it was called pinnacle. Oh, okay. was the editing software. Something that does not. The only exist experience there. I have with editing software is final cut seven. Oh yeah. That's no, like- I, I edited probably like, eight years worth of Smosh videos on. Did you ever edit off tape? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh my God. That was the worst. Yeah. And you have to do playback every single (laughs) second. (laughs) We recorded for like two hours and you have to play it back and be like, cool, we'll come back in two hours and it'll be loaded onto the computer. Yeah. That's crazy. That was rough. And you could hear the tape playing because it was all an internal microphone. Yeah. When I was in film school, they they had digital at that point, but they're like, you got to learn tape because it's never going anywhere. Oh no, never. (laughs) It's going to be Analog is here forever. Definitely. Wrong. Wrong. So, uh, um, we are fucking old, by the way. We're so fucking old. There's no old. way they still edit on uh, on tape now. And no, cool. fuck no. They yeah. taught basically as like the, they thought you it was- You were like the last class probably. Well, they, they, yeah. they, they thought it was the same as like still teaching um, photo students to use a dark lab. Like yeah. They wanted you to have that analog experience of like having hands-on relationship mm-hmm. with your tape, taking it off the tape, logging it, batching it, all that kind of shit. And that went away like- Moments after I learned it. I yeah, like you were still, literally last class. I feel like people still do that with photography, but with with with, 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 film, with internet video. Photography, I think it's kind of, how can I explain it? it? It's almost like a yoga process where it's like very, like people like to get. Like the they meditate room. in the process. They like to get in the dark room. And yeah. they, they, well, the other thing is a lot of people treat their photos in very weird ways where they'll like double expose it or do yeah. stuff like that. There's cool tricks you can do. Yeah, well. To, to the layman, it's like the coolest thing ever. But yeah. to a guy who's ever used a darkroom, it's like, oh, you spent 10 extra minutes on your photo. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So at that time, uh, there was no place to upload video yeah. uh, on the internet really at all, unless it's Ebom's world, which all they did was rip things off and put their URL huge on the screen. Uh, yep. I'll salt to you about that. that. <laughs> uh, which they did. It's because we got so much shit for our videos when I tried to submit it there for a little bit because I was like, that'd be sick to have our video hosted on a site. Uh, where I didn't have to pay for the bandwidth because at that time, if someone viewed your content, uh, especially video, you had to pay. It was coming out of your own pocket. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got rejected from there. Um, and then I, we had a my no, I had a personal MySpace page with like right. a couple thousand people on there. And I hosted these little lip sync videos that we would make on my own website. And uh, I created this little copy paste box where you could, we, it had instructions like control. A, then control C, then go to your page and then go to your MySpace editing editor and go press control V. And I had all the instructions there. And when they did that, boom, it would go to their page and it would have the instructions paste it again. So that's how I made my own little viral chain. Yeah. And I was that's really awesome. I was really, I mean, I saw that the, the monthly fees were like $300 one month and I had no money. So that's why when you look at those earliest videos, it says smosh.com because I was hoping people would go to the site, click some of the ads. Mm. I think I ended up making like 50 or a hundred dollars profit in the end, but still, you know, that wasn't bad. Uh, we put it all back into the, the, the videos themselves, but, um, I did a Google search. I was like, clearly this is being viewed. There's no way to see where your videos were being viewed. All I could see that I was paying a shit ton of money at the time. Uh, And I found that our, which one was it? Our power, no, our Mortal Kombat theme song, uh, lip sync video was uploaded to the site called YouTube. And it had like, a hundred views, 10 comments or something like that. And I was like, we're oh, doing shit. it. <laughs> I was like, Oh shit. You can upload to this site and you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. They're paying for you to upload your video to their site. Um, 
So then I messaged them. I was like, hey, we're going to upload this ourselves. Cool if you remove this. And they were like, cool. We removed the video and we uploaded ourselves. And a couple days later, we made the Pokemon one that you just mentioned. And that blew up and went to the front page of YouTube. And YouTube was getting all this traffic at the time. Everyone was writing the news front articles. page of YouTube, Yeah, man. yeah. Like having, Back then it was like, like... having your fingertips on the pulse of the planet. Every single person that went to YouTube.com saw that video on the front page. Back oh, yeah. then, too, like the front page was the, the highest viewed, right? Like there was oh, no yeah. curation. So it was just like... Well, Whichever video is the, the highest view, which they changed, I believe, very quickly. They changed that in 2011. There used to be a- Oh, I guess it's not very quickly then. The, no, not very quickly. But the, at that time, it, it was actually curated somehow. Uh, they used to have- the, That was the best. At the bottom of each video, it had a little link that said, recommend for front page. Yep. And I spammed the shit out of that because, <laughs> because I was a website designer at the time. I knew that sometimes there were flaws in these types of systems where- And I was going to abuse them. And I wanted to see what would happen if I did it. I don't did know if that work, was you why. Think? It might have worked. I like to think it worked. Otherwise, How much did you fucking spam that shit? I, I, I sat there for an hour. I was like, I was like, this might work. This might work. And That's I don't wild. know if it did, but it was on the front page. And uh, shit. You're like, this video has been recommended <laughs> one million times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't even have that many views. How did this happen? People but really must have loved it. <laughs> there was no checking or anything. I don't know, man. But uh, I like to think maybe that was uh, the reason I had any career. Was that's sitting that's about one hour of work. That's now canon. Sure. That's okay. it. Go getters. Sigma grind set music man. enters the room, you yeah. know. Boom, boom. Yeah, you, you, you rose early and you fucking, you rise then grind, grinded. Ground. I don't fucking ground, know what I'm saying. I, I'm going to ask you a deep impossible to answer question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, brother. Here I'm ready we go. Those. I'm ready at answering those as impossible As someone questions. who is so integral to the origins of, of YouTube and digital content, where do you think the future of digital content is? Um, that's, it literally is impossible to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a while, I thought... YouTube was possibly failing. That's why I sold Smosh in 2011. Mm. I was really nervous about what uh, the future looked like. Um, and then like even live streaming, live streaming popping off in 2020, I was like, oh, maybe everything's going to be live. Yeah. Uh, and then TikTok came out of nowhere. I thought that shit was going to fail quick. It did not. Um, so you're really good at predicting trends. I'm so good at predicting <laughs> trends. But I think... What do you think is going to be a failure in the future? <laughs> Just yeah, bet against him, huh. just so I can figure it out. Um, All right, let me let me no, give no, you a go back. Go back to your. Uh, yeah. Oh no, 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 I mean, um, but I do really think that it's going to be an ecosystem now, where unfortunately you're going to have to ha have your hand in a little bit of everything. Yeah, uh, if you want to maximize it to its fullest potential, it's like double dipping, triple dipping. People that do uh, live streams, you get to have the live stream, and then you get to have the vods, and then yeah. you get to have the clips from yeah. the vods, and that's you get three different types of content. Yeah. Yeah. Maximizing the well, yeah. live streaming is perfect for that. Honestly, yeah. like yeah. I, I get to I get to clip out for TikTok, I get to clip out for YouTube. You know, it's but great. you don't even do that yourself, right? No, <laughs> you Not just have no. that's just fan uploaded yeah. content, right? I have a lot of fan uploaded content in the Hasanabi Clips Industrial Complex. Mm -hmm. um, they're also on TikTok as well. I mean, that's like fifty-five million monthly views. I think Damn. it's that's like insane. an insane amount. Yeah, like my yeah. YouTube, my YouTube channel itself gets like twenty-five million views a month. I think, Damn. which is not that great. Uh, or yeah. I don't know. I think that's pretty good. That's I don't know. Really, it might 25 be million a month is good. Okay. Well, yeah. I get 25 million on my main page. Yeah. And then the Clips Industrial Complex in and of itself gets like 55 million plus a month. That's insane. That's good for you though. You see it as a good, even yes. though some people would say that's taking away. Yeah, no, from that's us. like eating away at 55 million views that I could have on my channel. Yeah. But I don't see it that way. I don't really care about it. I It's totally just like, we have some uh, boundaries obviously yeah. and some guidelines on like, what uh, everyone in the community considers to be like a faux pas. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a channel that was like a, a bot farm that was trying to take advantage of this with like Moist Criticals clips as well. Mm. Uh, they were doing it for XUC as well, where they were like literally DMCAing other fan channels. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, with my content. Like, you know what I mean? Even though yeah, I like no released sense. my IP uh, on, you know, deliberately. And uh, that's a big no no. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't mm -hmm. like. you. You can't basically make it seem like I made the video. That's another thing. Like mm. I, it needs to be like clearly defined as a fan channel, even though most people still don't look at that and don't realize that it's, it is a fan channel. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have to like at least link it back to my YouTube page and my Twitch. 
yeah. is like all I ask. I mean, before I knew, because I didn't just go to the page and like look in the bio to see, yeah. I was like, damn, Hassan has like, why is he running four different channels? Like, yeah. I was like, Shh. four? There it's are, weird I mean, he named his main now. channel I, Hassan as no, a thought. No, there are, <laughs> I think there are like, there are more than 200, I think, fan Shit. channels. Some of them range from like 30 subscribers all the way to a lot of them ranging at like the five to 10K. To some w that Dude. are verified by YouTube that are not affiliated with me, they're fan channels. Yeah, when you oh, when you look damn. up Hasanabi clips like daily dose of Hasanabi, Hasanabi clips like and there's some are these, some are verified. Some are verified. Yeah, I have also literally duked it out with YouTube to make it so that like you know they don't get demonetized. Yeah, do you think there are so many because people hear that you encourage it? Um, I think that, yeah, I think that there, that is a, a reason. For and you see it, it as sure. a positive because it's getting more of your stuff out there to, to, you know, more eyes. My goal ultimately was to always reach as broad as an audience as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that was like, I see this as a benefit. It's kind I of the viral video approach, you know, like, well, yeah, but the viral video, like obviously the fame and fortune that comes along with it is great. But like, I also have an overarching goal of like you know, spreading my message as far as yeah. possible. Like I do want people to watch it and go, Oh, I, I hadn't really think it. I haven't really thought about it like that. You know, that really changed mm -hmm. my mind. Mm -hmm. So if that's my goal, then yeah, I don't give a shit if people like literally steal my talking points or anything. Mm -hmm. Like that's what some people will say. They'll be like, Oh, this sounds like you. And I'm like, I don't, that's great. You know, I that's want good. That. That's what you want. You want more people want, to exactly. be talking about the things that you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. And, and have, and have a shared perspective. Yeah. So, you know, it's 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 doing something that I would otherwise want. Yeah, anyway. I mean, and, and a lot of people want you know their their thoughts to be to to live on and to be you know start discussions and yeah, in allowing people to rip off your content, it's uh, yeah. Um, what do you watch on YouTube? Uh, I'll shit. give you an example of my secret pleasure. I yeah. like uh, <laughs> hoof grooming videos. Just just cleaning the hoofs of yeah yeah they various do, they, types of they hoofed animals manage like the abscesses and it's like it's almost like a like a pimple popping video it's uh, kind of got that effect of like ooh. kind of a deep sense of stress relief like, like it's gross but also a little yeah. satisfying yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure because you're ungrossing it yes mm -hmm. they're fixing it yeah fixing the gross thing fixing the gross thing. what do you have anything like that that you're watching um I watch strangest things usually when i put on youtube i'm like i'm ready to sit down and watch like a long relaxing thing so okay. there's, this, there's this channel i think it's pronounced liziki and oh it's this, yeah this liziki? And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah oh that's chinese master best, chef. Yes. best girl best girl yes. oh my god she and is it's the so best. amazing and i just imagine what my life would be like if i could live like that yeah. and even though she's doing so much hard work manual labor all these things like spending hours making food months yeah. making a certain dish essentially yeah. i'm like that actually that. it's reminding me that you know it can be relaxing to do things that i otherwise might find stressful you know yeah no her her people say it's ccp propaganda i'm like fucking i don't give a shit i don't give a shit if it is yeah it's i love so that i want to relaxing. live in the chinese rural yeah. uh, village yes and then also kurtz gesagt you know for those uh educational videos they're they're animated videos um, that take one topic that's oh yes kind of an absurd thing like i mean i can't think of any off the top of my head i don't right consume now. any youtube at, for fun Really, it's all work. Do you consume any at all? Just non. No, nah, that's, that's, that's wrong. You just talked about Liziki. That's that's, that's wrong. No, he, he's he's saying that he doesn't watch any videos for fun off of his stream. Yeah, but uh, he's true, streaming true, true, true. eleven hours a day. True. So he's watching videos for him. But yeah, when I, uh, yeah, I watched uh, almost all of it. Is watching videos. But when I when it comes down to like you know when I turn off the stream and I sit back, I kick back. I'm not. Yeah, you throwing up the YouTube app. No, that's not true. I watch I watch anime. I watch anime. I watch movies. I watch uh TV shows. I never will like turn on YouTube and be like, let me let me watch my favorite YouTube channel. I feel like whenever I pull up YouTube in my free time, for the most part, I am just kind of seeing like what the uh, environment is looking like. You know, like yeah. what types of videos are, are on the trending page, what types of videos are popping up and recommended to me. <laughs> I watch a lot of New York Jets content too. Uh, oh, I big you, time. You literally while we were going live uh, on the podcast, we we're watching a clip. I was watching Rich Twitter. Eisen. Yeah. Yeah. Is that sports? Anytime sports. Yeah, like, that's my sports. brain. Yeah, hit out. It. My exactly. brain out. No, not interested. It's okay. 
Just, <laughs> you're, you're the Wrong crowd, bro. Right now, too. <laughs> you're fully jetted up. I right just now. want. I just want to be honest about what I'm doing. Yeah. I also watch Jets content on the elliptical at the gym. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're like, go team. We'll, we'll just draft speculation. Oh, uh, I know. There's so much more to it than just it's, like throwing it's the so ball. It's so masturbatory. But, when yeah. you are a fan of a bad sports team, yeah, <laughs> it's always like hope for tomorrow. Yeah. So it gives you something to look forward to. Yeah, it's like political content where you just mm. keep watching different videos oh, till you find the take that best suits your hope mm. and ambition. And then you go, "That's what's going to happen," mm -hmm. even though you know it's not. Mm. Even though you you know you live in a hellscape and the right. Jets. So it's when we all thought well. Bernie was going to win yeah. for one second. Yeah, right. Bernie Sanders is the Jets. <laughs> yeah. You're the rich Eisen of socialism. Yeah. Yeah. You just peddle I've, hope. I have fools. no idea <laughs> what that means. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. JTS, um, Jets, 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 baby. You mentioned legacy. Oh. What do you want your legacy to be on the internet? Oh, good God. Uh, no, I'm just throwing I'm just throwing six shades yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, damn, let's bro. see. Shit. Should I refer to my notes? Uh, let's see. My legacy. How do you want people to remember what you've made on the internet? I guess, you know, it's it, there's two different sides to the type. There's lots of different type of content that I want to make. You know, there's the content that I make now, deep conversations with people. Sometimes sure. we get into philosophical conversations. Sometimes we just talk about things in a vulnerable way that most people yeah. aren't always comfortable talking about. I like, I want people when they watch that stuff to, um, to just kind of have their wheels turning afterward to think like, oh, Am I, you know, suppressing something? If I talk about something like this openly, am I going to feel better? Like watching people have these kinds of open conversations, yeah. I hope will encourage others to have open conversations about themselves and be vulnerable or sure. you know, might consider therapy or like even getting into different parts of their history that may have shaped them and why they think and do the things that they do. Let's open that up. What would yep. you ask us? Well, I've, already, I've, I've interviewed this fucker. I've already done it. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, you have an ability to make <laughs> fun things bad. I watched you watch the same show that I watch, um, the Joe Schmo show, and you managed to suck all the joy out of That's it. That's not true. People loved it. No, they love you. But I, but but, I, but I watched it me and I was, for that I was baffled. You, you're like a Debbie Downer. No. Yes. You're, you're, no, you, I was having so much fun with Matt. You frequently bring the mood down. Okay. Go on. What, what was what would what would okay, the question you know, be? So, so, <laughs> so uh, when I I've changed up what I the way I do it a little bit since I interviewed you, Hassan. But uh, when I get on uh, a pre-interview call with someone, I kind of rapidly go through the different types of topics that I'm that I'm hoping to talk about with them. But sure. then one thing that's a little bit open-ended that I usually integrate into the final interview is I would say like, are there any moments from your childhood or you know just growing up in general that you think shaped you or made an impact? that has you know lasted yeah. with you to this day yep. and then we kind of usually get there so like and i was in my english lab at blair academy and i saw a video on youtube <laughs> shut, shut <the> fuck <laughs> up. i thought you were going to say the the porn thing what? What? did what? you have a video that you said you made what was it naughty neff oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah the fake adult website yeah 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 uh which by the way people say that a lot of different creators say that uh, that early stuff that we were doing made some impact or encouraged them to do what they do. And it just does not resonate with Yeah, me. you don't own it. Uh, to the point where you say it, I'm like, mm, interesting. Why don't like, you own I, it? I feel like it's just hard for me to, I don't know if it's just that, I don't know if it's imposter syndrome or what, but. Oh, we all have it's that. It's a little bit of like. Not me. <laughs> not this motherfucker. You are Debbie Downer. <laughs> It's, your around. vibes are fucked, dude. I'm fucking around. Go on, sorry. No, I know. no, no, you're good. Yeah, it's a little bit like I feel like if it wasn't what I was doing, it would have been someone else anyway. So it's not really like that big of a moment. Like I don't so, know. So it's, I have an interesting thing that I believe in. It's like one of the few little bits of mysticism that I keep in my okay, life. Okay, okay. There is a South African uh, deity that they believe in called Spiritus Munde. Okay. And Spiritus Munde is a, like a, um, and I might be botching this, but this is how it was told to me by my drunk South African friend. It um, <laughs> is like a, is like a spirit of inspiration. Okay. Spiritus Munde gives us all good ideas. Uh -huh. Spiritus Munde is very fickle, very bitter. 
And if you don't mm-hmm. act on that good idea, it takes it and gives it to someone just close enough to you Ooh. that you have to see it succeed. Oh, okay. So, and I've experienced that in my life, I feel like. Do you have any examples of a that good, you would feel comfortable saying? Of a good idea that I saw just take flight somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can think of a few, but... I think it's like something that everyone experiences where you have an idea and you're like, oh, that'd be great. And then you Mm. see it flourish. So like to a certain extent, yes, I'm sure someone else would have cornered the market on kind of the first very whimsical smash sketch on YouTube, Mm. but it was you. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Still, my brain shuts down a little bit when I, (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, "Mm." um, yeah, no, it's 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 really interesting. I I feel like one thing that I have always been really good at is if I have an idea, I feel like I can't not do it. It really it eats at me. It's all I think about. Where do you think that comes from? Is that does that come from the agoraphobic home life and kind of like this, this want to escape? I think it's a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think it is a little bit of like. Um, I think growing up, I always wanted to say to my mom like, Oops, <gasps> I just destroyed. <laughs> That this this cool. very expensive setup. That's no, no, no. That part you know, breaks all the time. <laughs> okay. That is kind of cool, though. I don't know how the yeah, fuck you did flipped it. up like that. You did that. it cool. I, I got my tricks, okay? Um, yeah. Is the audio still fine on Will's yeah. mic, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. I do think it's from that. I think it was a little bit of me wishing I could sit. Because my mom would tell me all these things that she wanted to do. She wanted to go out. She wanted to be able to get the job at the preschool down the street. She, she wanted to do all these things. And I, I wanted to just be like, just do it, please just do it. You know, you know, the steps. And I, I, in my own head, I'd be like, I'd work backwards. I'd be like, okay, then you have to do this first. And then that second, and then that third, and then fourth, you do it. Like that's, we just, you have to do it. And Mm. it's like this, uh, innate drive that I can't help, but just want to see the things that are in my mind come to fruition. And I think it, it did come from that experience that, at the time, I considered a really negative experience. Yeah, um, I hated growing up in a house feeling trapped, and it's really cool now being able to look back and see all the ways that it's motivated me to. Well, that always seems to I be am. the case, right? Is that trauma is more formative than than good things? Yeah, which is which is kind of ironic. Yeah. Speaking of things that you want to come to uh, fruition, that you you internalize and you you drum up. This is a classic Will Neff question that Ooh. I'm going to ask you. Okay. What's a piece of content that you wish you could make that yep. would define your legacy and that people would look back at and say that's that's Anthony Padilla? Yeah. What's it look like? Is it a movie? Is it a song? song is it a one-man two-hour stage show it's so hard because i feel like there's not ever one piece of anything that could ever actually define anyone sure and i think in the history books we think that's the way it is we're like this thing happened and then that was what this person is known for and that's what we teach when in reality they had all these little details in their life that are actually what more... would you want it to be though all right fine uh play the game god damn it <laughs> yeah. broke it down dude uh, broke down your I think, God, I can't say exactly what it would be, but I could say the elements. I think it would be something that, you know, in the same way you were inspired by our crude lip sync video, it would be something that could inspire people that watch, like, let's say it was like an hour and a half piece of content that felt like a movie. I'd want to do it on like a very, very, very low budget just to show anyone that they could do it if they wanted to as well. Um, And it would be something that would you know, on the surface, just appear entertaining, but then, you know, the takeaway, I would want people to kind of have it ruminate in their mind be and, much deeper. and then they can, I would want it to kind of catch people off guard and be like, Oh shit, I didn't realize that this is a value that Got it was it. teaching me. It was something that taught me, you know, something that I'm, uh, having a more and more firm belief is that Aging is something that really happens more so in our mind yep. and also from a lack of, you know, keeping up our physical body. Yep. So, uh, you know, like I'm 35 and people. And damn, you look good. <laughs> yeah, and people, I'll just say it. It's hot. <laughs> but yeah. Very hot. Very hot. For all of you at home, he's as hot hey. as he looks on camera. Yeah. Even uh, hotter. Um, Strikingly hot. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> You know, and, and people are like, oh, I'm getting into my 30s. Of course, my knee hurts. Of course, my back hurts. What do you do, to keep, what do, you do to keep yourself up? Yoga. Uh, so actually, I want to get back. <laughs> I want to do yoga. I've got really inspired by seeing people. Uh, actually, my tattoo artist, uh, I 
started following her on Instagram and she does these crazy yoga poses. And I was so impressed because she, this is all hand poke. And it Jesus was like, Christ, it was, it's brother. like over a lot of my body. How and much was, time is that? Uh, it was two eight hour sessions and one six hour session. So, uh, so she just had so much stamina the whole time. And I was, I was like, cause she was also in her thirties, but she looks damn good. And I was like, there's gotta be some kind of kind of some kind of secret here. And I, I, started kind of observing and she does this the most insane yoga poses like it's nothing and she's fit as hell limber just very limber and uh also i interviewed contortionists and mm. uh, one of the contortionists talked a lot about how you know she she wasn't just like born like with a bendy body she had to just train and train and train and you know it made me realize that in my head i thought that there was this physical wall this limitation like oh i just can't do that so why bother oh it hurts when i move down and try to touch my toes that's just the way it is but i'm realizing that it's just comes from a lack of pushing your body kind of like the discomfort you know so i've started yeah. to welcome a little bit of discomfort that i used to view as pain mm. and in the process of getting like a, a hand poke tattoo there's a lot of that as well um of getting in the mind of like oh i'm welcoming this this isn't actually pain uh this is discomfort and in my mind, I saw discomfort and pain as the exact same thing. And, you know, I realized that there really is a mindset that is the difference there. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I've started stretching more. I started, I want to be able to do some insane yoga he shit. Can, he can palm the ground now. Oh, I showed I saw, him. I showed him. I had to show someone. On the ground? Yeah, you put without both bending palms my knees. On the ground, but like, Whoa. Yeah. I, I think I can do that. <laughs> Let's see it. Palm the ground? Right yeah, now. without bending without your bending knees. Without bending your knees, though. Bending knees? Yeah. yeah. Can you wait? You didn't bend your knees at all, no, bro. He you bend are it. so. He bent it a little bit, but what? still, that looked easy. You made that look easy. Okay, are, you opened up. He opened you, up full stance. Oh yeah, wait, can, do do legs together, feet together. It's a little harder. A little harder. Yeah, you you didn't quite palm the ground. Okay, let's see. Let's see his legs let's together. See, legs big together. Hank Parker. <laughs> <laughs> big Hank Parker, but I'm double jointed. Yo, you guys better thank Where? me. I just In your got, jaw. No. Are you the throw cone? <laughs> Oh, that's a bend. Also, legs together. Yeah, you were calling me out. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I know. Because right? the just dies. Bend, um, but let feet together. Yeah, else? yeah. <laughs> See? It's hard. See, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's tough. I and I can touch, but I can't. I, we just got our first physical demonstration yeah. on Fear and Podcast. And I feel better already. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, we do physical demonstrations oh, all yeah? the time, but that's yeah. usually behind the paywall. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Right. Fearand.com slash like? Patreon, which we will get to in a little bit. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Patreon.com slash Fearand, which we will get to in a second. Plug, 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 baby. Are uh, you vegetarian? Yeah, I'm vegan. I, dude, something about a hand poke tattoo gave that away. What? For real? Yeah. Uh, 10 years. He was talking about like, discomfort <laughs> <laughs> and pain. You got to eat through uh, the discomfort. Shit, I don't remember where I was going with it, but you know. Uh, I've just been kind of, uh, trying to remind myself, oh yeah, back to aging, you know, and I, I, I want to be an example for my parents, you know, cause, cause it's a lot of, oh, well, I'm just, I'm in my fifties now. That's just the way it is. And I want to be able to show them that, you know, if I can do it, they can too. Yeah. You know, if I could get more limber kind of, cause the more that I stretch and work out, the more that I, I actually feel, I feel like I feel like 10 years younger than I did like two years yeah. ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a huge piece effect. of that. Oh yeah. And interviewing contortionists, it was like anyone can do it. And she's like, oh, when I, I fell in the splits formation and I was fine, even though most people would have like ripped something. I was like, I want to make sure that I'm not getting injured in all these yeah. ways. I feel like for me, it's interesting. I think he had a similar experience. COVID, not having COVID, but the era that was like hard lockdown COVID lockdowns yeah. fucked yeah. my shit up like your body was fucked yeah because yeah. they locked down the gyms yeah they they put padlocks on the playgrounds so <laughs> pull-ups yeah you couldn't go out and run mm -hmm. and so i would do walks around beverly hills at like 4 a.m like a psychopath <laughs> he's lying he also did rollerblading I rollerbladed. Rollerblading a lot, is sick, dude. But I did fall. Do not knock it till you try. No, I'm not. I'm just. <laughs> I kind of never told anybody how badly I fell one night, but I fell really, really like on a sidewalk on asphalt. I was going down a hill pretty fast, and I I I biffed it. And oh, I think no. I tore my rotator cuff. And yeah, <laughs> damn, were you wearing like any protective gear? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, not a helmet though. Oh. Pinged my dome off the ground. Did you hit your head? Oh yeah. He's oh, got shit. he's got a fat one though. He's fine. Yeah, I got a bulbous dome. Yeah. Fat head. Me too. I have um, to wear a large helmet. Yeah. For sure. I yeah, me too. <laughs> You have to large. wear a triple XL helmet. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Thank you for saying that yeah. because people don't understand. They always say I have a small head, but I don't. He doesn't have nah, a small nah, head. Nah. It's just like you got a very broad. Such a big body. You just got a very yeah. big, broad Such a big body. body. Okay. Moving on from the uh, the COVID thing, or at least like talking about that. Um, what was your What was your experience like with the with the lockdowns in general? Yeah, I didn't think it was getting to me as much as it did, but something. I felt so trapped and isolated in a way where I felt like I had no right to complain. You know what I mean? Because so yeah. many other people had it so much worse that I was like, it's fine. It's fine. And I think yeah. that just in my head, I constantly had a voice just saying, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Until, you know, I would recognize that some days I would just feel like complete shit. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just sat there with my internal monologue just constantly playing about how everything is going to shit the world's going to shit you know and i uh it was really reflected in my content i started interview i I did i spent a day with kidnapping survivors school shooting survivors uh human trafficking survivors death row survivors it was all these like really really deep intense topics where it was you know there would be some positive takeaways and i'd I'd find ways to be inspired by them thankfully i was doing the interviews at the time because i feel like talking to people uh who really you know, push Had through it way these, worse. Yeah, push through these insanely difficult things in their life. Like speaking to a death row survivor, someone who's on death row for <sighs> 45, 50, 60 years for something that they did not do and how they Shh. get through it, you know, and they talk about the ways that they coped. Some of them got religious. Some of them just got into yoga. Some of them, like the ways that they were able to stay within their mind and something that was so much more like clearly just solitary confinement compared to what oh, I, yeah. feel, I felt like COVID lockdown was solitary confinement, but they were like the, the definition of what that actually yeah, was. It's a human rights abuse, yeah. human rights violation. Yeah. 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 Isolation yeah. fraggle rocks the mind so yeah. hard. Did you yeah. guys have difficulty through that time period as well? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, the thing is like, uh, in the same way that you uh, found solace through interviewing people, yeah, I did the same thing. I I just I streamed forty two percent of the entire year. I was in front of a camera for the entire that's year. That's not even including sleeping, right? That's separate. Yeah, no, just separately. Yeah, that's the insane. rest of it was sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was basically just sleep, <laughs> wake up, and then stream. Yeah, and that's that's what I did to like keep myself focused to have like a you know shared perspective have a community that i could rely on did you still feel isolated though because i was doing my interviews remotely and of course there's 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 a difference in communicating with people even if it's the same exact conversation via you know screen there's like there's something about you know reading body language and minute little details that you just do not no it's not the same it's It's definitely not not the same yeah yeah it it doesn't hit the same my uh my brother died during like the isolation point part of covid and so I would, I was streaming a lot too. I would stream a lot. Then I would do VR a oh lot. Oh God, have, we did so much VR. A lot of VR too. But yeah. I would get, bad. I would get yeah. really ill. I would get very yeah. motion sick. Oh yeah. So I, I would get done at like four in the morning. And as I said, I would just go walk around Beverly Hills like a psychopath. Mm. I'm sure there were families in Beverly Hills <laughs> that have CCTV footage of me just walking around or rollerblading. Yeah. And like, like, this guy's scoping out That's a place a for sure. That's a serial killer for <laughs> sure. Be on the lookout for the rollerblading. Yeah. <laughs> could, could, you, could you visit your brother? Like, no, 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 no. I could, there was not even a funeral because of like when it happened. That's yeah, so it was, hard. It, was, it was not great. Yeah, yeah. My uncle passed also during that time and it was like, it was so, I can... I cannot imagine like, you know, especially like if you're isolated in a hospital setting and you just have machines around you and sterile environment. Like, again, that's like the feelings I was feeling with COVID, but amped up to a thousand. I cannot even imagine. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to something uh, a little bit lighthearted subject wise. Ooh. Um, Actually, I lied. We're going to be talking about deep, dark secrets, but I think. Um, on that note, we can end the uh, unpaywalled portion of the yeah. podcast oh, here and move on to the juicy stuff. I have a couple questions that might not even make it into the paywalled uh, portion if you're uncomfortable. Because I'm going to ask you it. to cut them out. 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not even kidding. Uh, okay, I'll sit back. Here. I have some. I have some questions lined up for you. Uh, okay. But uh, where can people find you, Anthony? Uh, you could find me on all social media platforms. Anthony Padilla, one word: P A D I L L A. Padilla, like tortilla. Yeah, I have Anthony to say, I have to say it. Yeah, you can say Padilla if you I, want. I suppose that's how, what I say usually. It's, yeah, you know, like quesadilla, yeah. jalapeno. I don't yeah. know why. I just I find it so funny to that's say fine. it. Mm. So satisfying. You're almost to perfectly say. lined up with a Trump hat back there. I can hear. Uh, it. Hell, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> that's um, right. Well, you can find the rest of the episode, the paywall proportion, at patreoncom slash hand and uh, we'll see you on the next one. See you there. I think this might be one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, I was about well, to say. Thank you, this guys. Was, this has been one of the most no, personal. That was, that was so fun. And one of the best episodes we've shot, for yeah. sure. Did you guys learn anything about yourselves? About the I world? Know if I learned anything about your about way myself. of thinking? But I think... Anything. I think it's always therapeutic to voice things that you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, I, I'm going to be honest. Usually the, the spicy content is us, you know, uh, saying something... Uh, perverse or, or yeah, yeah, getting something out of oh, it's, it's interesting that we both kind of revealed things about our careers that we yeah. had never previously. Yeah, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. therapeutic.